Well, hey, everybody. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. This is our Team Prosperity Wednesday meeting, and today is April 17, 2019, and I'm so excited that you all are here with us, and I'm really excited for the training today. I can't wait to see what Mike has in store and what he's prepared. And while we're waiting for more people to come in, I just have a few announcements that I wanted to go over before I bring up Mike. Um, the first thing that I wanted to talk about is that it's still Financial Literacy Month, so definitely make sure that you take advantage of getting yourself out there and um, advertising some for Financial Literacy Month and building your brand. Um, it's just a great way to open up conversation. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is the Green Carpet Day that Wealthwave has every single month. Of course, we're welcome every single month. But on July 19th and on July 20th, it's going to be when a big chunk of us virtual financial and, you know, me and Mike are going to also be um, at the Wealthwave uh, Green Carpet Day in July, July 19th and July 20th. So um, if you can make it, uh, we would love to see you there. The Wealthwave uh, head office is right across the street from the WFG office in uh, Johns Creek, Georgia, which is near Atlanta. So we'll have more details as the time gets closer, but it's a great event, um, and it's, it's a great way to get together and have some fun. So really looking forward to that in a few months. And then my last announcement before I bring up Mike um, is I wanted to talk a little bit about Legacy Shield. Um, now it's part of the All Access Pass. And so if you're a licensed agent on the WFG platform, you're writing business, you have the All Access Pass. Um, if you're a licensed new agent that's coming in, um, it's something that automatically starts. Um, so definitely take advantage of that. On the next few trainings, I'm not sure exactly what week, uh, we're going to go through an in-depth uh, PowerPoint and presentation on how to get that done. Um, as I set mine up, I'm going to go through and take pictures, and I'll create a little PowerPoint out of it. And I'm looking forward to sharing that with everybody. Um, so those are the announcements that I had. Um, just a few, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what Mike has for us. So without further ado, let me go ahead and grab him and bring him up. Thanks so much. Okay, everybody, we started in the CEO Club VIP Lounge today. Just to make sure and reiterate, kind of reinforce, the CEO Club is a recognition, but it's also building blocks of your business. And we consider the first CEO 10 Club really as you're getting past the learning curve. You're going to know from those 10 people coming in what you did correctly, what you didn't do correctly, what the other side might have not done, uh, what you need to do to kind of um, strengthen your approach and your filters to make sure you're bringing in the best possible people that aren't going to waste your time and your management's time. Um, as you build these blocks from 10 to 25 to 50 to 75, it's just putting all of these, as, you know, stepping stones or bricks into your business. So that's definitely something we want to keep track of and, you know, um, bring up as people come across these uh, milestones. So when we talk about our business, guys, and we've been really – you know, reinforcing the fact last number of weeks that we came up on our five-year anniversary since the launch. Now is really the time. It's the growth cycle that the other disruptors experience that year five to nine, the inflection point takes a lot of market share from the traditional model to the digital. And we talk about one of the largest industries in the world, there's going to be a lot of money on the move. So now is the time. And I'm not, not just talking about the coming weeks and months, but today, because remember what you do today, good or bad, is going to have a ripple effect, and it's going to have an impact on your life three, four, five plus years from now. So it's always about getting a rhythm of activity, keeping with that rhythm of activity, letting your efforts compound over a time period to get back what you want out of this business, which is a cash flow asset that pays you passive income that opens up other areas of your life where you're not concerned about how do I pay the mortgage? How do I pay for my kid's education? You've got cash flow coming in. And that brings me to my next point. The first of the new 12-week year WAM groups are this weekend. 
this your first time around or if you are helping one of your partners and this is the first time around for them, just let them know. First week, show up. It's one of the greatest things that you can do is just show up to that meeting, uh, be open about what's going on. If you haven't figured out how to fill out the worksheets, if you haven't done anything as far as activity, just be honest because what we're going to do uh, from the point of feedback is let you know uh, you know, what you need to do, help you overcome those obstacles, help you with whatever really you need so that going into week two, three, four, five, six, et cetera, um, that you've got a good grip on how to go through this. And like we always talk about, first time around, just complete the course. It's going to greatly help you identify what you're doing well, what you're not doing well, how to organize your day, and concentrate on the things that are actually going to drive you to your goals. Working with partners towards early goals prepares you and the partner for leadership. This is very important. This is going to help both parties. It's mutually beneficial. Um, you know, as people grow in your organization, your organization itself grows as well. And like I said, the interaction with the partners who are actually trying to make this happen, um, you know, put it in the effort, um, that helps both of you guys. It establishes that relationship, cements the relationship, but it also helps you and helps them as we go down, open up those leadership roles. You can be busy or you can be effective. And this is really what the 12-week year is trying to teach us. You know, if you go into your day unsure of what you need to do on that day, the day's already a failure. So you have to go in every day knowing what you need to do. And that's split up between the stuff that's most important and the stuff that's not the most important. You tackle the most important stuff first. That's the stuff that's going to be uncomfortable, the stuff that we normally don't want to do. Put that at the top of the list, everything else below. If you start to become effective over busy, you're going to see a big change in your cash flow and your business growth here. You're going to have to keep track of it every day. That's why we do the activity sheets. That's why we do the um, 12-week year. It's really all about, you know, the success of each day, you know, compounded and built up over a long period of time is going to get you where you want to go, and it allows you to teach other people how to do the same. If you know how to build an organization, scale an organization, get the most out of your day, and you can pass that down to your people that come in under you, it's a much better experience for them, which means your organizational growth and build out is going to be a lot faster. In the beginning, especially, guys, in the beginning of your business, if you look at this business from the perspective of income, revenue, and cash flow, you're not going to get to where you want to go. So what you want to do in the beginning is not worry about cash flow, revenue, and income. What you want to concentrate your efforts and put your mindset at is really concentrated on a bullseye combination of goals and activity to reach those goals. That's all you want to be concerned about, those stepping stones wherever you are in the tracks leading up to senior vice president. Um, you know, those are really what you want to concentrate on, the stuff that I need to do, the activity that's going to get me there, and everything else will fall into place if you're true to this, you know, method right here. Also, remember, this is an entrepreneurial opportunity. This is a business that you own. This isn't a nine-to-five kind of deal. So you're going to have time periods where you have maybe two or three hours in the middle of the day where not much is going on in terms of structured calendar time. If you need to go get stuff done, if you need to go to the gym, if you need to go to the grocery store, that's a great time to get that done. What you can't do is put yourself on a clock. In other words, saying, I'm not going to take an appointment at this time. Maybe I'll do a 10, 11 p.m. Eastern appointment at this time just because I know the build out of the organization is extremely important. Later down the road, I'm not going to have to do these, but you're going to have to structure your day so when you do have time opening, get the things done that you need. Because as other people lean on you for management, for consulting, you need to have a pretty open time schedule. You know, nothing ridiculous, but you're going to have to go probably some late nights and early mornings, and that's just part of this, you know, original build-out. You know, we're all about disruption. If you look at our business model, it's disruption, it's innovation, it's unlocking new value with a business model that we have. People understand that, great, talk to them. If people don't understand that, it's not a big deal. It's not your job to explain it to them. They either understand the environment that we're in or they don't. You want to talk to the people who understand it because when you understand it and when you apply that model to this size industry, it is an unbelievable opportunity. So like-minded people is who you want to have conversations with. It's a scary time for other people, whether they are employees, self-employed, business owners. They don't have a plan. Uh, you know, disruption, innovation, changing environments, globalization, competition, it's all just 
at a hyper speed right now. If you don't have a plan, especially a digital plan, you're in a lot of trouble over the next four or five plus years. You could be really involved in um, an obsolete business model. So just realize that you're on the forefront of a major disruption put you um, on the forefront of a lot of market share being moved, a lot of money being moved, and a real opportunity to build something that creates generational wealth. A lot of these companies are still using a system that was designed by Amway in the 1950s. So how are you going to dominate this industry? How are you different? We're different with our package of assets, our infrastructure, our tools, our training, our system, our capacity, our leadership. We will dominate the non-believers, the uh, naysayers, and the people that believe that business is going to always have to be done the way they're doing it right now. Those people are dinosaurs. Uh, they just don't know it yet. They will be out of business or they will be forced into a model like us in the future. The way you get richly rewarded is stepping out of that herd mentality, seeing things develop ahead of the curve, and staking your claim. You've got a lot of things on your side, and the, really the three things that I like the other side to understand from our point of view is digital disruption, changes, opportunities, transformations. Do they understand what's going on? If they do, then apply that to distribution with a virtual model in this size industry with all the infrastructure laid out for you where you never have to come in um, and add additional infrastructure, additional capital. It's laid out for you. And then finally, the product and the service. We talk about framing our conversations. Financial literacy is a major problem in this country. The product innovation, the e-apps nationwide reach, the needed device and education, those three things coupled together create a great business model on the product side for the clients, but it also creates an incredible opportunity from us as an entrepreneurial um, opportunity to build an incredible business. Digital agencies across the country, nationwide distribution, of financial services is really where you want to end up. How we get there is not being overwhelmed by the entirety of the process. We use those stepping steps, uh, stepping stones. What do I need to do next? What do I need today? Keep me moving forward. Guys, remember, not a business partner until they have completed tier six. So if somebody comes in in the circle and for some reason they can't get themselves together, they don't have effective time management, they drop out, it was really you know, it was a, a lead that was further along down the road, but it's not really a partner until they complete tier six, launch their business. And then you're really going to find out from that point who's working, who's not working, who do I spend my time with. And then out of those um, sample size of the population that comes in, you're going to have a very small percentage that what we consider the, the builders, um, the legs of distribution, the creators. And you're going to spend some extra time with those people to make sure they have every amount of support training tools from your side. It's not that we don't want to spend time with everybody. You're only going to have so much time in the day. You need to invest your time into something with a return. And also, you need to understand the business model, how it works, how we get paid, and understand how to apply the tracks to that. We talked about this for a few weeks in a row. and just want to make sure once you guys really digest how this business works from the income and revenue opportunity, it becomes easier to explain why we do what we do. So personal income, if people want a higher contract, a.k.a. more money, they can instantly get basically a 50% raise on the standard track exchange one, 100% raise on the fast track phase exchange one. So instant contract level changes instantly. And then agency income, as you start to build that instantly, even though we're still doing most all the work for you, on the standard track, you instantly establish a 14% override, fast track 27%. And then as you build up, you know, you've got spreads that go from 19 to 52%. So you're going to get paid to run a base shop. In the beginning, you get paid to watch your base shop get ran. The quickest way to get out in front and capture overrides is the phase one exchange. Expansion income. Well, that's another big part of what we're looking at. How do I get to the point where I'm not running a base shop? I've got independent agencies across the nation that are working for me. Well, you get that, you get there a lot faster. Uh, on the standard of the fast track. You've got six generations that pay you 36 per, uh, points or percent total, 17% on your first, 85321 on your second through your sixth. We always talk about in the strategy calls, concentrate on your first generation. If you do that and really create solid leaders and independent agency owners, the second through the sixth will take care of itself. And then finally, bonus income. This is performance-based income, 9% bonus pool, eight $16,000 quarterly bonuses, 
So you make more money and you get to the other streams of revenue and income faster on the standard of fast track. I think it's easy once you really understand how it's in motion, how the numbers work, to explain it to other people. And then once explained correctly, people really start to understand the benefits here. Your business is going to be built through a one, two, three combination of tier one contact, tier one confirm, and tier one ABC. In the beginning, we do the ABC calls for you. Tier one contact is the building bricks of your business. Tier one confirm is the follow-up to make sure those people have watched the videos. And the tier one ABC is going to categorize those people into one of three outcomes, potential partner, potential client, or neither. So you get good at the contact and the confirm. We handle the ABC until you're ready to do that. That's how you're going to get this business built on both sides, client and partner. Master the tier one contact confirm. Have tier one contacts every day, and your business will start to take off. Tier one's going to dictate the schedule and the communication. Even if you don't know a lot about your business yet, you can still dictate the communication schedule. You can still dictate where the conversation goes. You just have to appear confident on the phone. You don't have to answer a lot of questions on the phones. You don't have to have lack of confidence because you don't know. You're directing people to videos and you're directing people that you're going to follow up with them and you expect them to be there on the time um, to confirm they've watched the video. So remember, the most confident person on the phone is going to lead that conversation. Can be you, can be the other person. If it's you, you're going to have people falling into line and it's a lot easier to resolve these leads once that happens. You're one recruit away from explosive growth. Always remember that. We call it like the slot machine. A lot of people that come in your organization obviously um, you know, not be you know, that superstar that builds the legs of distribution. You're going to have a certain percentage that quit, certain percentage that try and have some activity, and a certain smaller percentage that really take with this platform and run with it. You guys only need about five to seven solid people to get this moving. Now, you may have to go through 35, 40 people plus to get there, but ultimately, once that's in place, that core group, you're going to see a lot of movement, and that movement's going to be multidirectional. As you start to build your business in the beginning, don't get behind the curve on a lot of things. You know, I'm not the most uh, organized person in the world, but I will tell you, if you start to build folders early and organize what you have in there, it's going to be a lot easier to find it for yourself and if your partners are asking for something. After you've created enough memes, you've created several hundred of these, you can almost put your meme activity online, um, kind of like on a rotation or a Rolodex. You just got all this stuff. You can go back, you know, and just recirculate those things. Uh, PowerPoints, media, marketing, other business guys, uh, virtual financial partner-specific information, and then product and provider. So start dividing up stuff, start putting it in folders, start getting yourself organized early so you don't fall behind the curve and everything's just scattered everywhere. Marketing is a big part of what we do. Your job is to contact people through social media, through marketing campaigns, whether it be client or partner-based information, we're in the business of contacting people. On the back side, our business is financial literacy, but on the front side, really is to contact people, uh, you know, let people know that you're in business, what you do for the client, for the partner, and open up conversations. Ultimately, in the beginning, that's going to start however you can start it. We start with a launch campaign. However you guys can get this done in the very beginning, get it done. As you start to build an organization, as you start to have money coming in, we always talk about two things. Pay yourself first and reinvest a little piece of that into marketing, not just blindly throwing money at marketing. If you guys need help with this, let us know. But you don't want to be in a position where you are months and months and months into this business and you're still relying on all outbound marketing. It's going to become even more of a grind to build this out. So what you want to do is educate yourself, lean on other people, talk to other people, and start developing a strategy that creates inbound marketing. It's a lot easier to talk to people who have already been exposed to your material that want to talk to you than reaching out with the sole intention of creating a conversation that leads to video information. So inbound marketing is going to make your marketing efforts a lot easier. It's going to make your day a lot better in terms of who you're talking to, the contact ratio, but you've got to get there. You're not just going to learn all of this stuff overnight. We'll have separate classes on this going forward. We're really going to start concentrating on inbound marketing to help you guys, but you've got to be willing to change. And one person always talks about this is David Chase. He's willing to change. He's willing to make himself uncomfortable. If you're willing to do that and go out and learn some of these um, inbound marketing tactics, tools, and vehicles, 
once again, your business is going to benefit not only at the top level where you are, but underneath you as well. And it really, you know, social media for the money that you can spend on well-crafted ads on Facebook and LinkedIn, it's, it's a great return. We just need to get good enough at identifying our audience, creating lookalike audiences, and deploying ads that are going to work. You do that by having very small budgets in the beginning and testing things. What are your impression? What are your clicks? What are your contact rates coming out of that? If it's something that starts to work, you can add more money. You don't just, once again, blindly throw money at this if you have no idea what's going to happen. Eventually, you're going to become um, good enough to where you know what a campaign costs, what you get out of that campaign. You're going to be able to get a return on investment. And once you know that, very, very easy to scale your business. There's tons and tons and tons of businesses on Facebook alone that created an entire business out of what they sell, their product or service, and Facebook marketing. Don't neglect to understand the importance of the environment and the platforms that we have to use, you guys. There's a lot of different ways you can deploy paid advertising, paid marketing. We're going to get into these as we go into the summer. Um, however, some of this stuff is going to work way better for you than other stuff. And we're going to go through these and explain why we feel that if you're going to do paid advertising, that you use some of these things. You can create a whole business, guys, out of the living benefits on the product side. If you were to learn one product, term as living benefits, and go out there and create advertisements that speak to your targeted audience, whoever you're speaking with, identifying a problem that resonates, makes them feel with emotion, then you're going to be able to create advertisements and campaigns on the product side that lead you to some pretty, you know, Great sales that stick on the books for long periods of time. Who needs living benefits? Everybody does. It's the crusade for the client side of our business. The percent chances from age X to Y that chronic or critical will happen is really great in today's society. And, you know, what does today look like that happened yesterday? So these are the pain points that people, you know, need to understand. And we always talk about, and David, you know, made this very clear coming from an insurance background, it's not about the risk of something happening. No one thinks they're going to have heart attack, stroke, or cancer. It's about the consequence of what happens to them or their family if it happened today or yesterday. So we're expanding to make sure people have access to the best products, the best tools, the best strategies they didn't know existed. Like I said, you can make a multi-million dollar business just off term of living benefits. If you understand how the product works, if you understand why it's needed in today's society, you understand both sides of who you're going to be talking to, either people with no insurance and insurable need or possibly people with traditional term outdated insurance. There are multiple marketing campaigns you can run for both sides. Test them. Once you find something that works, scale it. We're going to be going into more of these campaigns as we go forward. Also, in your marketing on the partner side, you need to understand the cash flow quadrant, where people are is half the story. Where they want to be is the other half of the story. If they're an employee and they're satisfied with that and they want to remain employed, great. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just not the right fit for us. If somebody's self-employed, building a practice, a book of business, and that's where they want to stay, uh, that's fine. We're looking for people who are already on the right-hand side of the cash flow quadrant or on the left-hand side looking to make a move to the right hand because they know where they need to go. If it's not a good fit on this basic philosophy or principle, it's easy to filter people out. And that comes to the next point. You know, is it a job or is it a business? If it's a job or a practice, then if that's okay with somebody and that's their mindset and where they want to stay, not really interested in bringing them in. We want to build a business and we want to bring people in who are builders uh, on the client and the partner side. A business is a free-flowing organization. A job or a practice is going to be all on you. And when you are marketing, you've got to realize that no one really cares about our model, our platform, our technology. What they really care from you on the front end is, you know, how can you help me get to my goals and dreams? So what do people really want? Well, they want lifestyle freedom. Of course they do. They want financial freedom, and they want time freedom. Our business model unlocks all three of these. In the beginning, it creates lifestyle and time freedom, flexible schedule, uh, be where you want to be. Financial freedom comes in later as you start to build the business. All three of these together create what I consider the new rich, and it unlocks a completely different lifestyle that many people in this country will never experience. So do people want these? Yes. Should be part of your message. 
And as we go forward, as we get older, we want two things. We want more money and an easier life. We don't want less money and a harder life. So when people understand some basic concepts, do you want more money? Do you want an easier life as you go forward? And most people are going to say yes. It's your job to explain how we get there. And that's the solution to the problem or the goal that allows you to create an action point. And then also, as you are marketing, guys, remember, we have got an, an, an incredible system. And we put a video on YouTube the other day, a couple of weeks back, about the system. But the system is designed to create duplication. It's designed to create nationwide um, distribution, financial services, agencies. But the system also is, a, you know, it also is created to allow the average to become great. If you use a system, you master it, and you teach other people how to master that system, it allows you and other people to rise up to a level of business sophistication, of income, of revenue, of growth that they could have never otherwise obtained just out on their own or in a segment of business model with no system. So never forget the value of what we have on the partner side for the system. And then also, guys, don't forget what exactly has been happening on this platform. You can see from 08 to 2013 and 2013 to 2017, how many new million dollar earners were on the platform? How many $1.5 million earners were on the platform? How many $2 million platform? And how many $3 million earners were on the platform? You can see it's a lot of growth and our digital model has just now started to um, really affect this platform. So you're gonna see the rate and the speed as we go forward in the next number of years of 1 million, 1 1.5, 2, 3 and beyond um, to really uh, speed up, and you're going to see these numbers really start to move with our digital model. Um, you know, $46 million earners, you know, going from zero, three million to nine. Uh, these things are already in motion. The only thing that we're going to do is provide speed and velocity with our digital model and our system. And don't forget, you know, we always talk about, you know, who backs us, that line that backs us. Well, one of the backings at WFG Transamerica, we use their platform. We're glad to have it. They can absorb the growth. They're prepared to pay out $4 billion in commissions in the coming years. You know, just the software and the accounting to get that done is incredible. So when you look at the other IMOs, who else could possibly back a project like this? You know, these squares should be smaller, but this basically shows you the size of the WFG Transamerica platform versus a lot of the other things that are out there. So, you know, it's a huge platform. It's already a billion dollar platform. It can absorb the growth we're gonna throw at it. We've got everything in place to make a huge run at this industry, guys. And we will get big by staying simplistic. Use the system. You know, the system's not gonna fail you. There's gonna be a lot of people that come through that probably fail you, tell you one thing, do another. But there's a big difference between growing and scaling. When you're out there marketing, when you're out there talking to people, you need to understand the difference. Growing means that you have to add resources at the same rate that you're adding revenue. On the other hand, scaling is about adding revenue at an exponential rate while only adding resources at an incremental rate. This is a scaling opportunity. Like we said, no additional capital infrastructure. You scale the business with very little um, increases in you know, resources from your side. So when you scale an operation, What's the point of resistance for scalability for that operation? Well, usually it comes to a point where you need something. Here, you need talent. Like every other company in this country that's growing, you need talent to grow your business. When you look at that, there's a shortage in this country, so you have to realize going in, and many people that you talk to not going to understand this, not going to be what we consider a qualified business partner, or one or more variable reasons. Get through the numbers. Don't think about the no's. Concentrate on the yeses, and those yeses will start to help you build your business. Also, guys, when you look at the financial picture out today, for somebody to come in and become a marketer in this company, they really only have to do limited roles, um, and they can make carve out an incredible business. So if we've got somebody at age 49 years of age, they have saved nothing for retirement, they make $72,000 a year, they want to replace that, well, in the next, you know, 16 years, for them to accumulate $2 million when they're basically cash flow neutral on a monthly basis for their expenses and income, well, it's pretty much a 0% chance that's going to happen. So we've got a new retirement opportunity and solution for today's person facing a, you know, a shortage in the retirement or facing a standard of living in the retirement they were not expecting. 
The solution is to get in here and work this business correctly and develop a cash flow asset that pays you six grand a month. Over the next X amount of years, if I had to put my money behind something between a marketer coming in at 49 years of age or an employee at 49 years of age, being able to save two million or being able to create a business with our help that spends off $6,000 a month in passive income, yeah, all of my chips are gonna go behind this model because he just doesn't have the capital to save that much money over that period of time to get him into a position to start, you know, getting back that six grand per month. So that all really boils down to the income calculator. We talked about, you know, the quadrants of income earlier, how the tracks affect those immediately. Um, but you also need to understand how to use the income calculator. You need to understand how to forecast income for yourself, personal, managerial overrides and distribution. And you need to teach other people. It's a lot easier when you come up with a number, 250, 500, 750, a million, and learn how to back out of that number instead of just saying, I'm just going to work this and whatever I start making, I start making. Ask your audience, what do they want to hear from you? What do you want? If you ask for what you want, surprisingly, you're going to get what you want. If you start asking or not asking for the right thing, you're going to look at a lot that you don't want. So learn how to attract and hire talent. That's going to be from your audience, targeted. That's going to be from your message, clear, concise, speaking directly to that person. These are all things we're going to be working on over the coming months. And some of the things that you guys can do, like for lead generation, no out-of-pocket money, you can install GMAS. It's a Chrome installation on Gmail. Uh, you get 50 free emails without paying anything. You can up the subscription for $7 a month. But if you, for example, sent out 50 free emails a day on GMAS, over 350 days out of the year, um, got a 1% contact rate on that and, you know, got a few partners out of that, let's say four to six partners a year. Yes, that's not going to make or break your business. But the only thing I'm trying to teach you guys, if you deploy enough of these things that have enough leads trickling in, it makes this business a lot easier. If you're only concentrated on one thing or only using one leg and it starts to have a period of time where you're getting abnormal results or little to no results, business craters. If you've got enough legs out there working for you that are trickling in leads, it becomes a lot easier to absorb when one particular marketing leg is not working. Also, set up your Gmail signature. Your Gmail signature is a great way to allow people to get to know you better, uh, get more information about you, your business, like another, you know, ability to market. Yes, we have a digital environment. Yes, we want to take advantage of that. But there's still a human element. People want to do business with people they like. Also, we've talked about this before. When you're out there marketing, when you're out there on the um, phone talking to people or sending emails, a vanity URL makes the, you know, conversation, communication, and text a lot clean. So if you're on the phone and you say go to aimless.vfgpro.com forward slash direct, they're not going to remember that. The way better opportunity to remember, go to playvideo.biz. So it looks better. It's easier to remember. And it's very easy to forward any of your pages that you want to go to any vanity URLs that you pick up. Also, when you're out there marketing, understand this is a visual environment. These uh, infographics were created on a PowerPoint, taking four pictures, putting them together, writing over it a little bit, exporting it to a JPEG. You know, I include these on social media messages. I include these sometimes on emails. This can be a post. So once again, you can get a lot more digested from the other side with pictures, visuals, graphics than with just plain text. Here's another example. There's a lot of information on this page that jumps out immediately, and hopefully you can get some of that stuff to stick with the other side. Another example here. So remember, visuals, graphics, uh, aesthetically pleasing things that jump out at the page are going to get you, you know, those few seconds to hopefully grab somebody's attention. Also, as you're doing marketing, posting, if you're doing what we call recycling of articles, you find a good article that you want to post on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, whatever it might be, Snipply is a great way to go in and create a possible lead generation funnel out of that. You can put banners on there, and people can click through to landing pages, websites. There's a video on the YouTube channel that shows you how to set this up. It's very easy. You take the URL, take it to Snipply, you'll snip it, and then every time somebody opens that article, your banner will be on the bottom with your call to action and whatever your link or your message button might be. Um, LinkedIn, guys, we talked about this for the last couple of weeks. It is changing really since Microsoft bought it. Um, it's changing 
you know, some people like the changes, some people don't like the changes. For our business model, it's more and more becoming, you know, in our wheelhouse to use it for more and more and more advantages. So if you are using LinkedIn very limited right now, then what you want to make sure you understand is the education process that you put into your time, energy, resources, and what you're able to get out of LinkedIn is amazing. If you're not willing to put in the upfront effort to learn about this platform, try things, and have daily activity, um, and you just stick to a routine of trying to connect and send those upfront messages, you're only getting about, you know, 5% of LinkedIn's value extracted. So make sure that you're asking questions, that you're, you know, looking for people on LinkedIn that are doing things well and following their lead. We're going to go through a lot more LinkedIn training in the next few weeks. But like I said, it's not, you know, no longer about an online resume. It's a digital reputation. It's a present. And it is a content marketing machine right now that allows you to, you know, establish yourself, you know, in your audience as an influencer. If you start to put out good content that people gravitate towards, they're going to start to open a lot of conversation. People are going to go back to your profile. So build your LinkedIn profile, work on it, have activity, and realize that if you're willing to put some effort into this, over the next probably four to five years, this is going to be an incredible site for our business. There's a lot of things that you can do, not just the day to day activity, but just, you know, increasing your influence over your audience. Sometimes I get messages like this, hey, Mike, do you mind teaching me how to add the photos over your picture in LinkedIn? Now, you can respond back and let them know, or you can ask for something in return, ask for endorsements, ask for a recommendation. So these are all ways to build your profile, you know, recommendations, endorsements. LinkedIn has a learning center where you can go and you actually get badges that you can put on your LinkedIn profile that never expire. Um, all of these stuff uh, reinforces your expertise in different areas. People will start to come to you if you are that type of person. Remember, we make you guys some templates. I try to do the best I can. I made a lot of these. But what you want to do is take what I've given you, and then over time, you want to kind of make it your own. As you start to develop you know, and learn about LinkedIn, you can change things around. If you ever need our help or get stuck, by all means, ask. But your name should be bold. Uh, you know, it should be big on the page, and it should really stick out. Adding your expertise to your name field will immediately communicate what you do and what you're good at, and your audience can then you know, view your profile. Also, the new addition to your name will now show up in all the search results and snippets, making you really stand out on the page. So for searches and just for visual, um, you know, aesthetics, have your name and have your, you know, that title jump out at the page. Also, your call to action. What are you going to do for your audience? What is it that you feel that you're best at? What can you get out? And we're always talking about the pain point, you know, so what is the thing that you can help? What is the pain point that you can alleviate? So we're out pulling your audience further into your profile. And as we go forward, we're also going to test some LinkedIn ads. I think LinkedIn is to the point now, a few years ago, the advertisements were not really working. I think with where the website's gone now, it's an amazing opportunity to spend a little bit of money and get a nice lead flow coming out of that. They've got three ad types, sponsored content, text ads, and sponsored in-mail. First thing you want to look at when you're going through your feed the things that are actually coming through your feed is called sponsored content, and you can pay to have that go through people's feed. The other thing is the text ads. Those are coming on the right-hand side over there under that stuff that people are talking about, um, those, you know, the right-hand side of your profile. That will be where the text ads show up. And then finally, if you ever got those in-mails before they're sponsored, uh, that's how those appear, sponsored in-mail. Now, you can actually go back into your LinkedIn. Let me show you right here. Um, we're going to start working on creating ads because what you guys can do is go to your back end and actually work on ads. The last piece of the ad is paying for it. So you can go back in there, play with their templates, create an ad um, to get used to it, and then when it's time to deploy that ad and put money behind it, you can schedule the budget, $5, $10 a day, whatever it is you want. Very little in the beginning to test the ads. But over here, what I call the Rubik's Cube in your profile, when you click on that, advertise right here, We'll take you in to start creating ads. You need to just set up a quick account. doesn't cost anything until you're actually ready to deploy that ad. So we're going to get more into that as we go forward. Uh, you can deploy very little advertising budgets per day to test. And then once you've got something that works, add money, scale it, and you're off to the races. And that you know, brings us to one of our last points for the day. If your business 
is built on something that you understand and that you can scale, it's very easy to commit dollars to it. If you don't understand where those dollars are going and what those dollars get in return, it's a lot harder to unleash those dollars. So yes, you want to start small, but even when you get bigger, if the return on investment is there, spending that money on the front end is not going to be a problem. Whether it's product, that's an immediate uh, client-based relationship of sale. On the partner, it's a little bit different to figure out. So what I use on my return on investment is the upfront exchange from the direct partner. And of course, on the back end, you've got the opportunity to get you know, partners out of that to create multi-million dollar legs of distribution. But on the front end, just for the advertisement return on investment, what's it going to immediately return for me in the first you know, 45, 60 days? If you don't know your numbers, don't know your business. Your activity numbers, your uh, uh, advertising money, your return on investment, you have to know all these. And like we always talk about, not just for you, it's for your business build out. So get in the habit of keeping track, reflecting, being accountable, knowing what works, what doesn't work, and how to scale the things that are actually working. So, guys, that is all we've got for today. Um, if you guys need any help with any of us, please let us know. Um, it's not going to happen overnight on social media. You're not going to become an influencer. You're not going to become a content king. Uh, you're not going to be able to engage thousands and thousands and thousands of people until you take those first steps engaging 1, 10, 20 people. So just realize if you're willing to put in the effort over the coming months, I would really concentrate on one thing and one thing only for social media, and that's LinkedIn. Guys, give me just a second. I'll grab Alana if you guys need anything today. You put it on our calendar tomorrow. If you're working, we want to actively work with you to make sure that we get your business built up off the ground and make sure that you're happy with the results. Wow, another great training by Mike Amos. Very, very impressive. I learned a lot. Thank you so much, Mike. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop the recording. We can open up the floor if anybody has any questions or wants to share. Thank you.